Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat episode 422. I am your host, Casey DeFridis, and today I'm joined by Per Snyder. Hello. Brian Altano. Hello. And, wow, that was really loud. <laughs> and tune in next my week. <laughs> wonderful wiki partner, Miranda Sanchez. Hello. Today we have so much to talk about, really just mm. way too much, especially why I'm terrified about Nintendo's new mobile game. Terrified. Also, yes. And also our favorite Nindies picks. Ooh. And our two favorite topics for the entire panel. Monster Hunter and Pokemon. Woo! <laughs> so this is going to be great because... I, uh, Brian, say something again. Do I have... <laughs> no! <laughs> Brian, you can't talk for the whole time. There's, there's a really bad echo on Brian that we can hear in the studio. So, so. guys, I'm re really excited to be on the show. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay, dear. we'll get that fixed eventually. But first, we should talk about this brand new collector's edition, Smash Bros. Collector's Edition controller. Uh, That's going to be joined with the special edition, Smash Bros. Ultimate. Can I only have the controller? I... No. <laughs> Just, you know, this is the thing. It's like so you can gift actually, it. gift it. Best Buy <laughs> does have it listed separately for Good. seventy-five dollars. Yeah, and bundled together with the game for one hundred and forty. So <laughs> you can get it. You can get it separately, but will you be getting it? I know Brian can't say anything because he's the voice of God right now. But I, I, I like the, I like the design. Yeah, try it. Y yes. Hi. Oh, yes. Oh, you're back. Good, good. All right, Brian. I think it looks like a Dalmatian puppy. <laughs> That's what I figured you'd say. I, like, you can shut my mic off now. <laughs> I, I got to say, like, I'm kind of getting bored with the pro controller designs where the, the handles are a different color than the body. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I wish they, they would say, okay, we did this now with Splatoon and, and Zeno, Xenoblade and mm -hmm. like do something new. But I do like the kind of like the gray and white look. Mm -hmm. I think that looks pretty cool. That's what I liked a lot yeah. about it. It just looks sleek. Yeah. And yeah. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. It looks good. I won't be getting it because I will Dirty be hands. using a GameCube controller. No. <laughs> so of course. Oh, you're starting that again. <laughs> and course. I well, I already have a Pro Controller. I just bought that uh, Zelda Special Edition one. There you go. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it works. It works really well. And I'm Casey, I heard from a couple of people around the office that like you are legitimately awesome at Smash. I'm just really good. Yeah, I had no yeah. idea. I don't well, think I because I don't think we've we haven't had like a setup here at IGN yep. for for years. There was just a setup in the corner on an old mm -hmm. CRT TV where people just played Melee. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, you got to show that off one day. I'm really excited to have the game back in the office so I can actually play with everyone because that's something I missed out on because I wasn't here the last time Smash came out. Mm -hmm. Disappointingly, not a Bayonetta main player. No, I'm <laughs> Pikachu. I play yeah. Pikachu. Yeah, I was thinking of picking up Bayonetta just because I think it'd be funny. Is it so. true that Pikachu is the cheapest character? Just the no, the Bayonetta is the cheapest character. Oh, really? so. Okay, so you can only play the cheapest characters yeah. is what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. No, Pikachu no. is not even top tier, and anyone who loses to me as Pikachu and uses that as an excuse is bad at Smash. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Pikachu. So, Don't blame so Pikachu. You have, you have the smack talk side of it down for sure. That's no, good. I've gotten so much crap, Brian. Really? Yeah. For picking Pikachu? Yes, because people like people just can't win. It's like you keep using Thunderbolts. Like, well, maybe if you were better, you wouldn't get hit by That's my true. thunder. Yeah, it's that not true. that hard. <laughs> so the the original host of what Nintendo Voice Chat used to be, Matt Casamassina, always played as Pikachu, and mm -hmm. only because only because of Pikachu, Pikachu. Oh, that damn, <laughs> that damn, damn so Thunderbolt. So you can definitely exploit it in group battles, but when in sing in one on one, it's really not that exploitable. It leaves you very open. All to right, attack. we'll trust you on that one. So this is not this is going to be ugly playing against Smash you. controller coming out. But next, we also have Onimusha Warlords was announced. It's a P 2001 PS2 remaster, and it's coming out January 15th of next year for twenty dollars. When people are like, port everything to Switch. <laughs> I didn't well, expect Here we go. This is it. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is it. <laughs> it, it. I mean, it's funny. I wonder if the Switch is inspiring companies to go back into their back catalog and port some of the games that will run on the Switch hardware. Yep. And then bring it. You know, obviously, this one is coming to the other platforms as well. I'm cool with it. O Onimusha was, was a cool franchise that went away just like you know dino crisis some of the other capcom classics i'm saying bring them back it's cool maybe konami can uh, can actually dip into their back catalog for some cool stuff too i am wondering if this means a new onimusha is coming out which i'd be really excited for because i i didn't play onimusha warlords but i did play a different onimusha for the ps2 that mm -hmm. had co-op mm -hmm. yep. i had a lot of fun with it's, it it's been a while this is a capcom game right yes yeah. capcom okay so mm -hmm. that's i think what's baffling to me is that they have this I'll cut right to the chase. Why isn't this Resident Evil 4? Like, why isn't this something that, like, I don't know, something they got iconic? Two. They got we're, two as yeah, a remake right now. A remake. Yeah. I feel like it's tough for them to say. Yeah. yeah. Gotta go through all the numbers. Our, That's true. That's I'm true. sure we'll see RE4 Anniversary Edition or yeah. something. I know. It just makes sense. That's a really good game, but RE2 is looking good, too. Yeah. yeah, so even though it's not Resident Evil, are you excited for Onimusha? Let us know. But next, we have a much bigger topic for a game coming out much sooner. Dragalia Lost. 
which is Nintendo's next mobile game. So some people listening or watching this may go, what? What are you, what? What is yeah. this game, right? Really lost. Not a classic <laughs> Nintendo franchise, not brand new, mm -hmm. and not coming to a Switch or a 3DS near you. Yeah, yeah. and it's made by Psy Games that is famous for making really profitable mobile games like <laughs> Huge mobile Rage of Bahama games. and Grand Blue Fantasy. So when you say profitable, you mean they figured out how to nickel and dime you a little bit? Like I mean, they do the gacha thing? Or? I played a little bit of Rage of Bahama before it went poof out of existence in 2016 and it's yeah. a deck building game and it's one of the, it's kind of like you know Fire Emblem Heroes where you have to pay to summon heroes and yeah. that's what Dragalia Lost is going to be like and what makes me so afraid of it mm. is because you're not only summoning characters you're summoning characters you're summoning dragons and you're summoning items wow. all mm -hmm. with those premium currencies so that's the afraid factor <laughs> is you're worried you you looked yeah. at the trailer. If you, yeah. have, if you haven't watched the trailer, the game actually looks really cool. It, it looks, looks like yeah, awesome. Secret of Mana. It has multiplayer and all of that. Mm -hmm. But you're worried because you look at it and you say, "I want to play it." Yes. And you're just going to keep spending money. Yes. And okay. I I almost, you're weak. I'm <laughs> no. I know I'm weak. I've had to delete mobile games off my phone to prevent myself from spending money anymore. And this is the kind of game I'm that looks like I'd be super into. Like the lore seems yeah, really the interesting. Super cute. The characters yeah. interesting. Yeah. The basically, so, the sorry, Marina. No, I'm just saying. So the way that I see this is that you get one. You get mm -hmm. one of those gotcha games that's just gonna suck you in. <laughs> you understand it's gonna happen eventually, but you have to find the right one for you, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's all about that. Is like, is this fulfilling whatever you need from this sort of game? And then if it is, you know, we'll see about it. And to explain gotcha, it's right. It's like based on the the capsule machines in mm -hmm. Japan, right? Where you put money in and you want one of the cool character toys that you see on the display, and you get a random one. You don't know which one, and that's mm -hmm. that's how these games make money. Is that you get this promise of something great, and then you get something really crappy, and like they keep you going. They give you something good so that you're hooked, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's it's sort of. First of all, it's funny that it it we pronounce it gotcha almost because it yeah. sounds like somebody's <laughs> stealing something from you gotcha. or tricking you. It's but like yeah. I, I actually, when I go to Super Potato, which is the retro game store in Japan, and, and stores like it, I love capsule toy machines. Yeah. I love them so much. Mm -hmm. But a cool thing about that is that you look into them, and there is a finite amount of things that you can get from it. Like six usually, like there's yeah. a lineup of. And things. and so if I see something I want, I know that there's a certain amount of money that I can put into it that I'm pretty much guaranteed to get it unless the ball gets stuck, which is, you know, you have to call a Japanese <laughs> maintenance guy. I don't know how to do that. I just leave. Um, but with these things, it's a very different story because you could ostensibly <laughs> pump money into them for the rest of your life and not actually get what you want, which is why you read stories on Reddit of people who are like, hey, I mortgaged my house and I tried to get this like skin in this game. Um, this game looks interesting. It didn't, if you if you hadn't shown me that like the Nintendo logo was in the corner of it, I never would have guessed this was a Nintendo game. Oh, yeah. In no. fact, and I don't even think I would be talking it about it. Looks like a square game, actually, on Atlas yeah. game, right? Yeah. Like, I do, you know, again, like that's, you can play four player co op. With That's friends, cool. and then there, uh, there are also um, uh, public events where more people team up to attack a boss. So it it looks really really cool. It has a lot of features, mm -hmm. and it is an action RPG, right? Like yeah, you right. you run forward, you swipe to attack, you swipe to dodge, and mm -hmm. do all these different moves. And there are a lot of really deep RPG systems. Like your characters will have different elements that they wield. They have different weapons that they wield, and they're like how Fire Emblem Heroes. Like you need certain characters with certain attributes to make levels easier for yourself and that's how this game is going to be as well like you need certain characters that are good at healing or wield a certain element or have a certain type of weapon and that's why the gacha is going to mm -hmm. be so important because you'll need certain things to get past levels so mm, and that's so, kind of how puzzle and dragons was you couldn't oh right i think eat certain things without certain monsters so for me they're, they're the gacha games that so I just, I'm just generalizing mm -hmm. that they will at least have a limited set of things that you can get from event drops or whatever it may be. And then hopefully a free gotcha thing that will keep giving you things because they have to reward the players yes. too, right? Like they yeah. can't just, I mean, they can just mm -hmm. lock everything behind a paywall, but you hope that they don't, right? Because mm -hmm. you can't just like full out pay for this game. Um, my biggest worry is how fast will it kill my phone? Uh. <laughs> you know, I'm worried. So, that is one of the things I'm worried about because I'm like just watching this looks really yeah. impressive and neat, and especially having multiplayer. But it's just like, do I need to be tethered to an outlet when I play? Or no, you're totally right. I would say that this looks a lot more sort of intense on your battery. Oh, than yeah. a lot of their other mobile offerings. Yeah. What do you, you know? what do you, what do you think? I mean, this is really the first game that isn't based on a Nintendo franchise or kind of like the concept of the me characters. Like this is a, a, a new, a completely new IP, new brand. Do you think 
they're establishing this and then tying it back to the Switch or the 3DS? Or do you Maybe. think this is their one-off partnerships with so, Games and it just runs out? There? Right, right, right. I could actually see them getting into anime, weirdly enough, because mm. Games, a lot yeah. of their properties become anime or oh, other okay. projects. So I could see them maybe like yeah. looking at that route with Nintendo. Like that could be really interesting. Hmm. Um, but I don't know if I necessarily see this going to Switch or anything else. Yeah, I think it's interesting because as a, you know, old school, hardcore Nintendo fans, we look at their mobile offerings as mm -hmm. effectively kind of snacky versions of mm -hmm. things that they're yeah. doing already. You look at Animal Crossing, it is a very pared down version of the console and DS versions. Mm -hmm. You look at Super Mario Run, there are bite-sized levels with uh, limited mobility, but it still captures the essence of what you're trying to do there. But you don't necessarily feel like you're missing out on anything specific if you have those console and handheld versions already. This is exclusively going to a platform uh, that isn't a Nintendo device. Mm. And I find that interesting. So if it's a hit, then yeah, it would be really cool to see a, a, a version of this running on my TV. Because like now that I'm actually digging into it more, I'm like, oh, this actually like looks pretty fun. Crystal yeah. Chronicles yeah. like. Yeah, you know, that's, like, that's yeah. my jam. You if, know, if I love stuff like that. If that were to happen, I think it'd be really interesting to see Nintendo partner with other developers and say, hey, let's try a thing on our mobile platform mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then maybe see how we can expand that to a full game for yeah. Switch mm -hmm. or something else. Do, and then second question, do we have to like set up some sort of permissions where you have to ask us for permission to buy something on your Ooh. phone or are you going to be able to control yourself on that? <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of considering asking to review it just so I have an excuse to put a ridiculous amount of hours into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I did notice in this trailer that you do get those premium currency stones every time you level up, and you will also get them for like logging in bonuses and other things. So they will give you some of that premium currency, like those yeah. games usually do. And the cool thing is, this will I believe connect into my Nintendo. Uh, so you'll oh, be yeah, able that would to make sense. unlock currency through that too, yeah, or like whatever you that do is. with uh, um, Fire Animal Emblem. Crossing and Fire Emblem. Yeah. yeah, whatever that you know, or you'll get wallpapers or something. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but you can sign up for this game now. I don't know what I signed up for, <laughs> but you can do that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's an option. So regardless. yeah, it's called Dragalia Lost. Yeah, Dragalia and Lost. Yeah, there's a website yes, you can go to where you can plug in your email or connect your Club Nintendo right now or My yes. Nintendo, whatever they're calling it these I'll days. I'll check it out. And that's out September 27th. Yep. Dragalia oh, wow. Lost is out on September 27th, and Gee. we are slightly afraid of it, but I'm also really looking forward to play. Mm -hmm. Yep, super curious. And next, we have more information on Damon X Machina, which was not playable at Gamescom, but they <laughs> did reveal a whole bunch of new footage, which it, you got to see. It there, was right? there. It was a bummer. So I, I was at, at Gamescom, and I saw... I saw Nintendo people in a big red box playing the game, but you weren't able to, uh, you know, the days that I wasn't there, I wasn't able to play Damon X Hatfield. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a game I, I feel like we haven't paid enough attention to on, on this show because right. it's always kind of like tucked away or it only shows on, on one of Nintendo's Treehouse streams. And I hope that we'll be able to go hands-on with it with it soon and, mm -hmm. and play a little bit of it. But it's it from... It kicked uh, off a direct at some point. That's I think right, from, yeah. And, and so I think people were expecting... It was the, the surprise game, yeah. Yeah, people were expecting everything and then they got this and didn't know what it was and then just rolled on to the more familiar faces in the direct. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm coming around on this one. So this footage is from, from Gamescom uh, where they had the, the producer, um, Kenichiro Tsukuda, who was at, um, he, uh, he actually uh, was a producer on a couple of Armored Core games and you can definitely see the, yeah. the connection here once you get into the, the mech parts of this. But they showed a bunch of stuff like they showed the kind of on foot stuff, they showed uh, leveling up the characters. Like the whole concept of the game is that the moon has crashed on Earth and has thrown everything into tur turmoil, humanity is in trouble, and AI has become sentient and has taken over. And so you're basically, uh, you're jumping into these uh, machines they are called Arsenal. Uh, arsenals and uh, you're picking different mech types and they're based on like kind of based like one is based on a knight one is by, based on a samurai like as a kind of like a basic outfit mm -hmm. um, and then you take on uh, enemies in battle and as you destroy enemies you can take their weapons so you know as you play you customize your mech you level up it has RPG elements um, it's looking really cool especially yeah. some of the boss battles and then it it has a um, it has a four player uh, co op mode. Oh, what? That's awesome. Yeah, local and online. So uh, Tsukuda said, uh, you know, kind of highlighted that Switch was really the the perfect platform for this because you can play anywhere. So local, same system, or local two switches? Uh, m both, okay. both setups. And there is a uh, if you don't have four players, you can fill the party with bots as well. So you can have AI bots as your partners playing with you. So you could play co op with uh, with non humans too. This feels like um not graphically but sort of aesthetically or sort of like vibe wise it feels like a ps2 era game 
you know? And that doesn't mean like it's like low poly or it's ugly or anything like that. It just feels like something that would have really thrived during that era. Um, yeah. And the kind of game we don't really get a lot of it was, these days. It, it definitely, you know, uh, Joe Scrabbles had this cool uh, interview with another Armored Core producer uh, who, who, who's still at, um, at From Software about like where have all the mech games gone? Yeah. Right. That's kind of what I mean. And From is way overdue to do something on this front and we'll probably see something. But uh, this game is here and it is kind of, it, it really feels like the, those classic AC games. And um, yeah, graphically, it's you know it looks good when you see it, especially when you see it on the small screen. It looks good. It isn't like the you know like the most gorgeous game. Though some of the boss battles look really really um, it's impressive. It's stylized well yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. Same like Starlink. You know, like those yeah. games. Like you don't look at them and go like, ooh, that's the most gorgeous game. But like there's some really cool stuff in it. And then mm-hmm. uh, what I really like about it is um, the kind of like the the energy balancing. You've got HP like in uh, in a in an RPG, but you also have uh, their equi- equivalent of magic points where you know you could for example get a beam weapon and that consumes those magic points so you kind of got to balance your different That's systems cool. yeah i'm i'm digging it i'm, I'm looking assuming forward to it. the max will be fully customizable customizable so you customize your uh what do they call them your alpha the humans are alphas and mm-hmm. the uh the mechs are um arsenals and um, when you customize your human, the kind of customi- customization traits carry over to the mechs as well. Huh. And then in battle, you know, you obviously start upgrading um, your stuff too. But in battle, you can uh, you can customize. Um, there are lots of objectives that you have to follow, and you mm-hmm. can stray from them because you want to get a better weapon a weapon to prep yourself for bo- boss battle. So it's it's really uh, huh? always straying from the yeah. path. <laughs> and and it has so it has kind of like this this uh, confined like arena open world setup. But there are mm-hmm. also levels where you go down tunnels like into confined spaces. So they showed that at Gamescom as well. Awesome. Cool. No, yeah. I adore really mech cool. games. So yeah. yeah, want to see more of this. Yeah, Tons I'm really more. excited. So while Pear was at Gamescom, I was at the Pokemon World Championships in Nashville, Tennessee. Weird place to have a, a Pokemon championship, but it was actually really adorable. You know, uh, you look through that slideshow that I made about the stage. Yes. It what do you think? So cute. I love how they actually, well, it's not like, well, they actually did something this time. It's not that. It's just that they really took their setting into account of how they want to, like, theme the championships this year. Last year was really disappointing. So this year, it was nice to see them turn around and, like, go all out for it. And it just, like, reflected. Explain it. Yeah. I missed it. Was it? Like? If you're watching the video right now, you okay. kind of see some of it here. Um, this is just the intro. But they gave all of the Pokemon instruments. They actually created a country-themed Pokemon song. <laughs> about it. Um, that is one of the uh, grand finalists for the VGC tournament, um, Emilio, and he's mm-hmm. wearing one of the special bandanas that they were selling at the Pokemon Center there. Um, it was really cute. They had like um, hay bales all over the place. So like the entire stage was like, of course, this main area, but then behind it where they had multiple mm-hmm. games going on at the same time too was just like this alleyway of different shops that were themed mm-hmm. based on like different Pokemon names and also just keeping like that really country feel. Yeah. And so it was just adorable and like great presentation mm-hmm. and I'm jealous that you had to go oh, it's like yeah. super cool yeah it's a stupid question is that donkey a Pokemon <laughs> yeah that's Mudbray <laughs> oh really yeah Man, he's great Evolves you would have gotten so beaten up at this Mudbray. tournament no I we should send you an no, interview no, people no, I would love to get is that harmonica is that harmonica super good Pokemon? Group, yeah yeah. yeah, everyone's really nice and really kind, and like I, these kind of events, I love going to because it's just so positive, and everyone gives the most amazing speeches. Like the person who won this game, um, Paul Ruiz, he gave a speech when he won. He's the first person from Latin America who won the VGC tournament. Oh, that's so cool! And last year, he went to the top eight and wore Ecuador, his uh, country's flag, on stream. But this year, he didn't wear it because he was representing all of Latin America. And it was My just, heart. yeah, I know. It was just so cute and really heartfelt and amazing. And everyone is just so kind. And I, I love going to these events. And I hope to go to more. I think even when you're watching these, if you don't know Pokemon, I think if you even know, like, the least bit of it, just mm-hmm. going and attending and seeing, like, how high level of play and like, these strategies and seeing how mm-hmm. people turn around these mm-hmm. battles is just so incredible. So you think yeah. it would melt even our sarcastic Yes. Mean black heart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just so like check excited. out, check out the final. I, mean, I feel like you and yeah. I just gotta like I think watch one together. Yeah. And even you know, get one of your weird brown <laughs> drinks. <laughs> That's coffee. Oh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so between you not being able to identify coffee and me not knowing that that donkey was a Pokemon, I think we're gonna knock this out of the park. To be fair, that's not always great. a coffee in that cup. I think that would be a wonderful <laughs> video feature. Yep. Pear and Brian at the Pokemon games. Yep. Mm-hmm. And see if we smile or if we get angry. Yeah. I All will right. smile we'll the whole time. I yeah. love Pokemon. Okay. I just All don't, right. I'm not familiar with it. 
I have no have, problem we with it. We do another one of those. Those there's tons of videos out there of people who don't know Pokemon, like asking their grandparents yeah. or something. It's like, mm-hmm. please name these Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> 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 can you guys, yeah. Brian, let's do it. Elders, Elders here. Yeah. we're doing yeah. it. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a parent. I'm not yet a grandparent. Pair. I'm not saying you guys are grandparents. I'm not a grandparent. I those, those videos are abundant. <laughs> yeah. But I'll have you guys. You guys are funny. Yeah. It'll be funny. It'll be great. I'll show you around. Why? What have you heard? Show you around the world. Sweet. I really want to meet that donkey. <laughs> It'll be a wonderful meeting. But, <laughs> <laughs> but first, Maybe. let's. So there was a giant. We had two Nintendo Directs this week. Yeah. What the heck? And the other one was a huge Nindies showcase where they showed off. 22 games, which they announced for Switch, some with release dates, some not so much. Some are re-releases, like Towerfall, that's going to have a new six-player mode, and um, Hyper Lake Drifter, and Undertale, and a bunch of other really awesome indie games that are finally coming to Switch, plus a bunch of new releases. Yeah. It, it, there are honestly way too many to go through. I, I love these Nindy Directs. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, like, sometimes, sometimes it's like... It feels like here are some of the best games that have appeared on Steam in the last two years. <laughs> yeah. And like they're being, we like talked Bastion. about this, right? Like they're being curated now for the Switch. Yeah. Like the best survive and come over. But sometimes there are genuine surprises in there, new games. And like obviously Towerfall, if you haven't played it, it's this really fun. I mean, it's almost like a retro Smash Brothers fun, like single screen uh, multiplayer experience. And like adding, like upgrading it to six players is going to be really awesome. Yeah, it's going to be chaotic. I, I can't wait for that. So I know sometimes people get down on the whole, like, well, this was on Steam forever ago. Mm-hmm. Like, why yep. are we just getting this? Or why are we have this at all? And it's like, consider that not everybody has PCs. Yep. <laughs> and that yeah. they do have a Switch. Neat. And like, now it's just like a great opportunity to share these games to a new audience. And yeah. also play it on the go. Like, that's yeah. That's so awesome. Exactly. I think that's a big aspect of it, too. And it's also, I, I don't think people really realize how much work it takes to make a game sometimes. And putting it on Steam and having it live its life out there for a year or two or three years sometimes uh, is great, but a lot of these games are getting a, a gigantic boost on Switch. I mean, we're reading stories all the time about Switch games that are in their first week outselling their entire mm-hmm. Steam li- lives, and that's really cool to see, especially for uh, a game to connect with an audience. Something like Blossom Tales, which I, I championed a lot on the show, it's effectively the closest we have to a link to the past on mm-hmm. Switch. It's a top-down Zelda style, very pixel art, it's very beautiful. Um, that game sold phenomenally on Switch, and it sold pretty well on Steam, but like it, it has a second life now, and that's really cool. It gets to connect with a whole new audience. Yep. So really quickly, everyone, tell the audience your top pick from the direct and why it is your top pick. Where do we start? Miranda. All right, so I have three. No, that's no. Cheap. You got to pick one. No, you got to pick one. You can <laughs> mention the names one. of the other two. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention the other two first. Okay. So first, obviously Undertale, if you know me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Play it. Um, then also play it four times. And then um, <laughs> Untitled. Wait, should, Beast should you game. play it four times? Is that the? Yeah. Yes. Like it, I mean, the very minimum is like three. Okay. Did you? It's the, it's really important. The second one was Untitled Goose Game. Yes, Untitled. Are Goose you hoping Game. that's the final name? Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yes, I really. I think do. it will be. It's kind of stuck, right? Yep. Like, I think it's, everyone knows what you're talking about at that yeah. point, yep. right? It's which, about a mean goose yeah, harassing. Which, which, by the way, I want to give a shout out to uh, GameSpot's whoever runs their social media <laughs> for putting up a video of this game and above it saying, "Writing Jerk Goose Simulator." <laughs> 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 All right, what's the what's the real pick, the big okay, one? So my real pick is Minako's Night Market, which I've been waiting for for so long. I've been following it across its development. Um, I was a little... This is so off-brand for you. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's nothing, not off Nothing in my interest at all. So it's when just, I when I was making this run of show, I put that as one of my picks, but yeah. I, I knew that Miranda, she was going to want to pick oh, this one. I've been following the devs forever, and I'm just like, as they keep growing it, like you you grow cats, and you need to go mine, and you have, to, you have a stall at a night market that you have to run, and cats are just everywhere. Like if you go to the developers' Twitters, which I don't have written down, unfortunately, mm-hmm. um, they just post awesome gifts from the game of them just kind of messing around the system. Like, how many cats can we get on stream? That's a hot and tip. I think yeah. it looks so cool. It so looks good. like an Animal Crossing style, kind of like Animal Crossing yeah. Harvest Moon with a really cute, you get to cool ride your art cats. style. Yeah, you get to ride and race on cats. It's like only yeah. recently have we really started kind of figuring out that there's a story to this and like what that is. And I think yeah. a big part of that was in this trailer of like finding this mysterious cat who's kind of like worshipped as a guardian in this town. His name's Abe. And uh, just trying to figure out like, what that mystery is, and that that's the big cat we've seen in a lot of promotional material, and I know you find him because I've seen the character run around with him. So Minako does nice. find him. Mm-hmm. 
For full disclosure, I think Humble Bundle, Humble is publishing this game. Yes. Humble and so IGN are owned by the same company. Yeah, so I followed it. But we're way not before their then. shills. I didn't and even I saw that. that. And I was yeah. like, all right, now yeah. every time I get you excited tell about people. this, gotta, yeah. yeah, gotta definitely mm -hmm. say that this is a humble game. So yeah. that game is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's super like really, really good. It looks looking. really cool. Yeah. I, I respect the hell out of a game with like such a dedicated art direction. And like when that. is that coming out? Um, actually, early 2019, I believe okay. they announced cool. it was going to potentially come out this year, but now it's 2019, which is totally fine because okay. there's plenty coming out this year. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. All right, Brian, what's your top pick? Um, have you guys heard of Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP? No. Yes. It's yes. So it's a. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yes. The room is divided. Um, this was sort of an iOS darling. Um, you might have remembered it back in the day. Kind of when like iPad gaming came out. I played it on iPad. Yeah, I think we're, that's where a lot of people did. Um, and it's this sort of like uh, hyper stylized, very kind of gritty, mature pixel art game uh, that brings in a lot of weird adventure elements. It has one of my favorite soundtracks, I think, I've ever had. It's one of the few soundtracks I've ever been like, I need to buy that on vinyl. Hmm. Um, and this is just like a really really awesome kind of fantasy adventure game it doesn't really look like anything else out there and like a, you know pixel art games are kind of a dime a dozen on switch we see them all the time this is this is one of my favorite ones this is a very mm -hmm. special one sword and sorcery sword and sorcery the name is weird yeah but uh keep an eye on it yeah. all right parent what's your what's your top pick my what was my top pick oh uh uh, uh into the breach so Did Into the Breach, um, they basically, sh uh, they showed it in the Nindy Direct and they said, they did the Apple thing. It was like, and you can download it right now, which I quickly did because I've been waiting for this game. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Advance Wars and Fire mm -hmm. Emblem. Mm -hmm. And this is from the gentleman who brought us uh, um, FTL, this really cool uh, spaceship simulator, really mean game. And what it basically is, it, it actually, it looks more like Advance Wars than it is. It's almost like a, like a mech chess game like mm. it's uh, it's about employing strategies like for example you have um you have uh, one of your mechs can shoot uh can create a shot that pushes uh, the enemies out of the way and so you kind of want to aim for the middle in between them to knock them out of the way and into a po pool of water or lava or whatever right and so mm -hmm. you have to kind of plan where you put your units where you move them what you repair uh, you want to shield buildings so that they don't get, get destroyed by the enemies it's a it's a very clever very strategic game where the a ai for once is not dumb a lot of <laughs> a lot of advanced wars clones have really really bad ai and and this one doesn't um it's it's clever. You're expected to die, and then you reset, and you you kind of respawn in a new timeline, and you keep the battle up, and you may have to fight some battles over, but but you have some kind of uh, persistent elements where you upgrade and and grow your um grow your force. Uh, super clever, cool game played from uh, from an isometric perspective, and I had my eye on this. Tom Marks was playing it on PC before and said it was great, and I I've, I knew it was going to come Tom to Marks. Switch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like right at home on Switch? It's it's just so good for uh, for a handheld machine because cool. you can some of those battles are like three minutes long. They're kind of like okay. these micro battles, depending on how good you are and whether you go after the uh, you know like a core objective or you try to wipe everybody out. Um, it's it's just really good to play on the go. Uh, it can be a very very mean and frustrating <laughs> game, but it's but it's uh, I'm, you know if you're at all mean into strategy games, you got to play it. Mean and frustrating how. Like you, uh, you thought you had the perfect plan, and you've oh. proven that oh. you were being a real big idiot. Sounds like a strategy game because yeah. you <laughs> overlooked that there was going to be a tidal wave that traps your tank, and then you can't yeah. shoot. Yep. Yeah. So I guess my topic is the world next door. I had not heard about this game at all until I watched the Ninnies Direct, and it's coming out in early 2019. And it's a narrative-driven game where you are play as a girl who is trapped in a parallel dimension of sorts. Which is inhabited by mythical and magical creatures, um, and you kind of pretend to be one of them. So I guess you're not eaten or something. I'm not sure. That's usually how it works in other worlds, right? That right. Mm -hmm. um, but along with having to choose different narrative uh, dialogue options to progress the story, you also have these puzzle games that you play in between, where you're running across runes to cast spells against your opponent, and that looks really cool. And they also have a 1v1 multiplayer mode as well, and I'm excited to play that with some of my more competitively inclined friends. Mm -hmm. Are you going to wear those masks? And I would love to get one of those masks. <laughs> the mask is great. I think they're really cool. I wonder if you can customize your character. I don't I don't know. There's not much information. It seem like That's it. That's really but all we have. Their style is yeah. pretty spot on. So. Yeah. It's really nice. cool. I'm just drawn to those kind of games. It reminds me of a lot of anime that I, I'm into. I'm pretty sure that's actually being 
published or somehow Viz Media is involved, I think. Oh, okay. So that probably makes sense. Mm. Cool. That's really awesome. I guess they, they did describe it as an anime inspired game. So that makes a lot of sense and is probably why I'm drawn to it. So really quickly, rapid fire honorable mentions. We've got Untitled Goose Game, Samurai Gun 2, Bastion, Levelhead, and a ton more. What else did I miss? Any oh, man. other ones that... I don't remember what was in it. Oh man! Whole list. Goose, Goose Game. <laughs> Goose Game was my 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 number yeah. two, and then mm-hmm. Mineko yeah. is uh, yeah. my number three for sure. There's a lot. Yeah. There's yeah. a um, lot. I mean, Hyper Light Drifter. We mentioned it quick, right? Mm-hmm. But that that's a really cool game. And then Transistor, Transistor which is on there too. Bastion's yeah. Yeah. sequel. So well, I mean, different. Yeah, they're very different. Mm-hmm. They're um, I I actually like Bastion a little bit okay. more. Um, Brian although, likes Bastion. A little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole game is narrated with a re- it's a, got really funny VO. It's sort of just like Pear just ate a sandwich for lunch. And like, Leave me alone, dude. Um, but Transistor has like it's incredible style. Again, really good music. I just wasn't as in love with like the kind of the battle system in it. Mm-hmm. But still, they're both they're both gems, and it's cool to see them on Switch. Great lineup. We'll go ahead and provide a link in the description so that you can go see a whole list of all 22 games with all of their trailers. And now we're going to talk about games that have actually come out this week, and there are quite a few. Yes, there are a I lot played of them games. all. I didn't play them did all. You? No, I them Monster, all. Monster Hunter oh. came out this week, and I don't think Brian. Oh, I did not. I'm afraid of Monster <laughs> Hunter. It scares me. I know. I keep. I, I know. I know. It, I know. I will. Is it full price? Yes. It's okay. There's like <laughs> a thousand hours yeah. worth of content in Monster Hunter but Generations I Ultimate. I don't have Pair. a thousand hours to spend. Pair, there's what? a demo available on the eShop that you can check out and judge yourself. If I'm yes. going to check it out. There you go. You can definitely do that. But so it's it's obviously it's not a completely new game, and it's full not. disclosure, I already own it. Um, okay, you own Monster Hunter Double Cross, which is <laughs> so <laughs> the by same the way, game. <laughs> we're talking about Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Yes, yes. That's right. Monster Hunter Generations well, Ultimate came out on Tuesday for the Nintendo Switch, and it is an basically an expansion of the 2016 3DS game that came out. It has a full like huge number of new difficulty quests called G rank and 14 new monsters and it's been changed just a little bit and kind of optimized and and you know some of the ways that they've changed I actually don't like from what they did with generations for example the um, the felines you can play as cats in this game which sounds really <laughs> awesome I know right you can you can do prowl- you just you can do- sold coffee. Yeah, you can do prowler mode uh-huh. and you play as a cat and it's really, really useful when you're gathering things yep. because the cats don't run out of stamina. You don't have to have any items with you to gather. You just do it infinitely. But they nerfed the cats. They nerfed the felines. <laughs> they so nerfed the cats? They nerfed the cats, and we they are outraged. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they, they do like 30% less damage and have like 30% less That's defense. That's an outrage. As they were in Everybody knows cats are more powerful than dragons. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently people use, use the prowler mode in Generations pretty regularly and now everyone's telling us like, don't do it it's not worth it and oh I, wow yeah but so they Bummer. i mean they, unless they, you're gathering so they, <laughs> they tweaked the game and i actually when i first saw it running uh I, I, somebody was capturing footage in the office i'm like oh huh, what's that it actually looked better than yeah. i thought it would it like, looks I really good i didn't immediately recognize it and, yeah. and i didn't think it was, was going to be visually upgraded like yeah. that so they obviously worked at that but did they fix some of the the kind of outdated menu systems the the kind of annoyances like, that's pretty. This is classic Monster Hunter. This yep. game originally came out in Japan in 2016, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it's old. It was developed way before Monster Hunter World was. It is all the old styles. I was honestly kind of dreading relearning the old style of Monster Hunter, to be completely honest. After Monster Hunter After World. After Monster Hunter which World. Fixed a lot of that. Yeah, which mm-hmm. had a ton. It had more than 45 quality of life improvements. Like, it Jeez. had. It was so different and a lot better in a lot of ways but i got used to monster hunter generations ultimate very quickly again and it's awesome because there are so many monsters in this game you will never get bored i mean there so monster hunter world has 33 monsters this one has more than 90. Wow. oh my right. gosh so you That's don't awesome. you don't fight the same monster twice unless you really want to <laughs> i saw some pushback on the general review consensus on this game because it is not necessarily being judged entirely by its own merits, but also being judged against what the franchise iterated on and improved on in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that's fair? That it's being compared to Monster Hunter World? Yeah. I don't I don't really think it is. I think it should be judged entirely as a standalone thing. I mean, I guess it's fair to compare, but I don't think it should affect the overall score. Right. I think there's value in having that information. Mm-hmm. So like for me, I came in with Monster Hunter World and I'm expecting 
to play something mm-hmm. similar to that, but also having known what Monster Hunter was before that, right. like I had tempered my expectations of like, okay, well, are these things that I need to get used to because that's just how it is in this mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think if you're not prepared going into that, like that's really valuable information, but I don't know if that's necessarily what you'd hold it up to for review. As for me personally, as a reviewer, what I would do? No, totally. It's it's kind of like, like judging that Mario has fall damage in Donkey Kong and then he doesn't <laughs> in Mario. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You know, it's like, well, that's just how they did it before, you know? Um, yeah. I never I, thought about that. Isn't that weird? What a wimp. Like, bef- yeah. He got stronger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He had a lot of, of <laughs> mushrooms and pasta and stuff. Uh, we can talk about that later. <laughs> we'll talk about Mario's mushroom enhance- enhancements later. But um, I've been asked a lot, is Ultimate a good Monster Hunter to get started with? Or will people like it if World was their first? Mm. Um, Generations Ultimate is a lot more difficult to get into, especially if you're playing by yourself with no one who has played mm-hmm. before, because it doesn't do a really great job at explaining exactly what to do or what you can do. Is there a guide for <laughs> like, that, though? So there is a guide for that. You should go on uh, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate Wiki on IGN.com, where we have a ton of what to do first. Um, who who, who <laughs> wrote that one? Tell you. You so actually, um, one of our freelancers, uh-huh. Clayton, uh, wrote a lot of that and then we so also guilty for a second. I know I, I feel guilty it. I've been gone for the last You're week busy. but I trust him because I play Monster Hunter with him and he helped me beat the behemoth and for those of you who know that that means that means he's pretty good oh, I so. remember <laughs> my oh, yeah. days when I beat the behemoth <laughs> no man the behemoth in Monster Hunter world is <laughs> terrible that sounds awful I take all that back <laughs> um, that's so it's, you're saying it's better to start with Monster Hunter World than this one can you go back after Monster Hunter World and play this or will you so, be so annoyed I thought I would be really annoyed. Yeah. I'm not. I oh. got back used to it. I love it. I just picked up my old weapon that I used to use in the older Monster Hunters, which is a great sword, and I'm loving it. I'm having a lot of fun. All I want to do is play Monster Hunter. I was actually really afraid. So my boyfriend's first Monster Hunter was World. I was afraid he would not want to play this game with me, that he was going to pick it up and be like, this is terrible. This isn't like World. The quality of life isn't there. And he was going to be upset about it. And he just got into it and got used to it, like, no problem, and awesome. really likes it. So... so as also someone who kind of did that, yeah. I think I'm more excited about it because I know there are going to be changes and like some that will make it harder, but I'm prepared because I think I had a good foundation with World. Yes. Like now I've learned all these things that have helped me get into this universe and understand like weaknesses of certain monsters. I can go in and find even more monsters. And so I think that's exciting. And also it's mobile. So yeah. And nice. I think anyway. that is a really great way to go about it. Yeah. So if you start with World like Miranda did, you will have a foundation. Mm-hmm. And then Generations Ultimate just kind of like makes it a little bit more difficult and has a little bit more systems. But because you have a base foundation, you'll be pretty good at it already. Yeah. And to be fair, the guy who does give you tutorials is really funny. Yeah. It's actually written really well. I'm yeah. surprised. So the localization is awesome and it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I love it. Lots of cat puns. So what are you guys playing this week? Yay, cat puns. <laughs> Brian is playing the every messenger. game or, that or popped game. up in the <laughs> news <laughs> section yeah. on... Yeah, I, well, it's a... It's, yeah. you, you, you know, if you haven't heard... Brian, talk about what games he played. I, I play a lot of games. Well, I do. Let's Grab a chair. Talk about the messenger because the messenger yeah. is sure, out yeah. today. Um, the messenger is uh, the closest we've gotten to sort of a eight bit revitalization of the Ninja Gaiden franchise. Mm. Gaiden, I always Gaiden. say that weird. Gaiden side okay. story is what it means. Here, I said Gaiden when I was a kid, and I've been breaking my brain to try. Did you to also fix call him Ryu in Street Fighter? Yeah, oh, we didn't know what we were doing. It was yeah. New Jersey in the, in right. the '90s. Um, so this game is phenomenal. It's a uh, or it's an eight, according <laughs> to <my interview. laughs> actually. I liked it a little bit more than Mitchell did, but um, this is a action platforming game that sort of centers around two major mechanics. One of them is cloud stepping, which if you're watching the video, you can see. But if you're not, um, it's effectively uh, this air attack that you do into an object while jumping, which uh, basically gives you a double jump. It's like every Chinese or Hong Kong uh, movie production, yes. right? Where they do the little fring yeah. off a little bamboo twig. You can do that in this game. And so what this does is a, a essentially lets you link those jumps uh, from enemy to enemy or object to object in the environment, which turns a pretty tough and challenging platforming game into just like this beautiful like sort of feat of art to watch somebody play that perfectly. Um, it's hard to do. There's obviously a speed running aspect to it here, but the way I can sort of summarize this game is it's kind of what, for what Shovel Knight did for, you know, games like, I, I guess, DuckTales and, and Mega Man and, and, and Zelda and Mario, this game does for Ninja Gaiden. Uh, it's really cool though, because what it 
definitely adds later on is that this is an 8-bit game that later lets you switch into 16-bit graphics. And narratively, it explains that as in there was a massive passing of time. And so in the 16-bit era, that's cool. <laughs> later on, yeah, so there'll be a tree that like existed in the 8-bit era that rotted out or was burned down. Uh, or there'll be like branches that grew or a town that's, that appeared. And so to get items that you couldn't find in the 8-bit ape, ape era, you'll switch between the two graphical styles. That's so mad really that neat. the other franchise didn't come up with this first. I know. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, and so it jumps idea. generations. I will say this is a fairly challenging game. I didn't find the platforming to be too insanely difficult, but it throws a lot of bosses your way, which are pretty tough. Luckily, the checkpointing's really good and pretty generous, so you'll mm -hmm. get a chance to fight them a lot. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the music, too which you can't hear, but it's some of the best sort of like uh, chiptune music I've heard in a modern video game in a very long time. Um, this was made by a very small team at Sabotage. We had them on Up at Noon recently, and they talked about how Ninja Gaiden was a huge inspiration to them, and they got to show the game to the creators of Ninja Gaiden and some Aww. of the people who worked on the music for that game, and they played it and loved it, and the original music producer for Ninja Gaiden contributed songs to the game because he liked it so much, wow. which is just like... Yeah, just Dream come true. That's yeah, really so cool. Yeah. So it's super cool. Um, yeah, check this one out. This is, I think, this is like my one of my new favorite sort of indie darlings on Switch right now. So I do have a question. I know Mitchell in his reviews said the second half of the game was a little bit slow mm -hmm. and kind of limited him from progressing by making him backtrack. Yeah, and it's it seems like people are kind of mixed on their opinions on this. Some people really like the second half of the game. Some people really dislike it. Well, it's it sort of pulls a switcheroo on you, no pun intended, because <laughs> it turns into a Metroidvania game in the second half. Mm -hmm. And if you've been playing the first half thinking it's this like sort of really tough as nails action platforming game, uh, and then the second half it's more about finding entryways to small environments and little tunnels and stuff like that and passages to unlock items, um, you might be let down a little bit. But for me... I can see I, that. Yeah. So like you're changing up entirely how you think about approaching yep. this game. Totally. That, that can be hard. Totally. Mm -hmm. And you know, there is backtracking and if you're not really all about 100%ing a map and looking around every nook and cranny for little things, it might get tedious for you. Mm. Um, but for me, I, I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. So yeah, check out some gameplay videos if you haven't and give this one a look. I dig it. Pretty cool. I like the shop that's on screen right now. It's, it's very, really good. It's very cool. It's really I haven't been able to play that. I played a little bit of Bad North. If okay. you guys have seen that, that that kind of snuck out. It's another strategy game, warning, but it's real-time strategy from a Swedish developer. Um, and it's kind of like the, again, the kind of one-map approach where you see like a, you have a little island, you have units that you can deploy, and you basically, it's almost like a tower defense strategy, real-time strategy game. You have to kind of send your troops in to defend against these incoming Vikings. Right. It's, it's really like the art style is really cool. It's polygonal. Most strategy games are like grid-based mm -hmm. and stuff. And you can, uh, you know, you can uh, upgrade your your um, your teams to like uh, start firing arrows or have like special moves like a ground slam and stuff. Um, the only thing I'm encountering right now is like I feel like I'm I haven't progressed far enough in the game to see it actually evolve. It's not challenging me in a way where I need to kind of change my strategies. Mm. It's kind of like every time I'm I'm able to succeed with the same strategy for like. 30 levels and oh, so wow. that oh, might be that might be an issue but How long um, you're just level? too good um, <laughs> no, that. it's it's a couple it's like a five minute level okay. and like you know it's like just kind of incoming forces and you got to move your troops around if uh your your troops get um get hurt you got to put them into a house and have them heal and during that time you don't have anybody to deploy and so right. it's it's cool it's really nicely done it got a cool art style and sound effects and everything but i i want to see if it if it will switch if there will be something if there'll be something new later in the game that challenges me so if you had to choose between Bad North and Into the Breach. Oh, Into the Breach. Okay. No offense, we go. See. makers of this wonderful game too, but Still good. Into the Breach is just like much more, like you can tell they tweak the levels and the strategies right. and the concepts <laughs> to, to the max. Yeah. So Miranda, I know you played a little bit of Little Dragon's Cafe. Yes, I played uh, a good few hours now. Yeah. I don't even yeah. know how many, but it's... It's getting there. Yeah, I've played a couple, and but you interviewed the creator of the game. Yes, um, what Wadison, you, Yeah, yeah, we talked. So this game got a six point four for okay from our reviewer, mm -hmm. um, and I see a lot of the points that he's saying, and I tend to agree. Yep. Um, a very good enlightening piece of information I found from my interview was that about seventy percent of the game that like Wada wanted to make was cut. Oh no, so, uh, <laughs> that's just so sad to me because this is a game yeah. that I was really looking forward to. I was really to. excited for it. Yeah, it's so a. He told you that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was like, so I'll have the full interview up on IGN soon enough. Like I did it last night at like mm -hmm. 5 p.m. because yeah. I have to. <laughs> 
time differences. Um, but yeah, so he kind of told me about like all these things that he wanted to put in this game, but they couldn't just because of time restraints, of course, budget. Um, so it's weird to start this by saying he really wants to make a follow-up sequel to Little Dragons Cafe, and like uh-huh. it can't be done as DLC. Like it all needs. There's a lot of systems they would have to build mm-hmm. in. Um, so F- first step. I mean, I've, yeah. I've played a little bit of this game. Yeah. First step. Yeah. Make it 2D. This developer clearly struggles with 3D you graphics know, engines on the Switch, at least. Yeah, it's choppy and it constantly loads. So yeah. I think it uh it it's been running a little bit better as I've been playing for a while. Like okay. I noticed like the choppiness goes away or you get a little used bit. To it. Not um maybe <laughs> a little better, bit, yeah. but also I think it does just get better. Maybe it gets. Um, so I really like the style of it because it has like that storybook look to it. I wouldn't want to see them go to 2D, but they could. But I like how it is. Like, really, I love. I just love the style. I would have preferred and and Wada Sun obviously is the creator of Harvest. Moon, yes. Right? Yeah. So for it's, those who don't know him, he uh, he he basically gave us this kind of farming simulation slash RPG genre, and you can find it in this game too. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like you, you see the bits that are there, yep. and like that he really wanted to create this world. So part of this inspiration came from was he wanted to make a game about a story with a story, like just follow through on the story and just really nail into that, and then develop the systems around it. Whereas with like Birthdays at the Beginning, which is the one he just made before, was more of a simulation game, just about the mechanics of like creating a world and there's a bunch of animals and mm-hmm. it's kind of building that up. Whereas this is, like I said, story. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't know the story, it's about these two kids who have to run a cafe and raise a dragon in order to wake up their mother who has fallen in deep sleep for mysterious reasons, which I can tell you and they're very weird. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they're, they're interesting though. <laughs> I mean, so I'm curious. <laughs> turns out that she's half dragon. Spoiler, you learn it in the you first learn, like, five, the first five minutes game. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. their mother's half dragon, half human and her blood just decided not to cooperate anymore and so now she's asleep <laughs> so a wizard so. shows up in your house with a dragon egg and yeah. ask for you to make him breakfast and then yeah. the egg hatches he's just like if you, you if you raise this dragon if you take care of it, if you take care of your mom's cafe everything will be fine so there, there's, okay so there's a quest but yeah. it, but it is very really much weird. kind of it is still a harvest game too yes like yes. you go outside you get uh you 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 get Plants and ingredients uh, very for easy going. customers and yes. you cook and all of that. So, like, there's I think a few hundred recipes, maybe like, or maybe maybe a hundred recipes at least, and like I think a few hundred recipe fragments. And so you have to find fragments for recipes, and sometimes people will just give you recipes as you get new customers and you meet new people. Um, new people join your cafe to help, and so like there's like a very cute narrative, and some of the guests that you get are very eccentric or just like fun. And some of them I just want to shove out the door and never see again. Um, but I think that, like, that's the charm of it is definitely the characters. And I think right. that's what he was trying to do. And he also said he had a lot more that he wanted to include that couldn't. Um, and so I, I'm really enjoying it. Like, it's fun, very easygoing. It's like kind of a game that I want to have like a podcast on or something. Mm-hmm. Um, as I review today, like there's really low stakes. Mm-hmm. So you don't ever have to go to bed. But you get your daily report for the cafe at midnight every time. Mm-hmm. But I could just stay out and keep collecting ingredients if I needed to. Um, you do Again, have your some. Mom's asleep. She yeah, knows. she doesn't care. No, I don't have to answer anybody. <laughs> Not gonna uh, be grounded. Yeah, so you just have to keep feeding your dragon, or else I don't know what happens when he gets hungry. But it's pretty. He goes on a rampage. He just gets hungry. Pretty your chill, guess. relaxed game. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. Slowly paced. Yeah, and you do have like a cafe rating, so there are responsibilities to make sure that you're getting better ingredients, getting better menu items, mm-hmm. um, helping out the people at your cafe because sometimes they'll slack off or they might just get overwhelmed with too many customers, and you might need to go like wash dishes or take orders or do something else to help out. But um, there's not tons of consequences. It's just slow and. Kind of, it's really nice though. Relaxing. Yeah, and you kind of unlock new areas as you progress and get your cafe or higher rank. And so it's ultimately about uh, just kind of like following the story, which is actually pretty laid out. So that your next goal is in your menu, and you say, okay, go to sleep and then visit the cafe in the afternoon. And then the next thing will happen. Um, and your dragon will eventually get large enough so that you can ride on it, and that opens yeah. up the world a lot more because you can fly on your dragon, which is really cool. So <laughs> bringing it back to Monster Hunter, Waddle yeah. actually yeah. really likes Monster Hunter. What? Yeah. Oh man, he loves Monster Hunter. Yeah. Specifically, he loves Rathlos, which is we why he little, wanted to make. We got a little Rathlos. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. So he wanted to make a game where you get to be friends with the dragon. Yeah. That's so. so cool. Yeah. That's an awesome little bit of information. Yeah. I so think, it's, I think one of the things that the reviewer pointed out is that. If you look at this game as a story-driven game instead of an RPG systems-driven game, you'll have a lot better time with it. Right, which is what he was going for. Yes. And I think because they did have to scale back so much of the customization, because there was supposed to be customization more so than just changing your dragon's color by feeding it certain recipes. Um, and there was supposed to be a lot more story stuff. Ooh, that's like in school when you feed the snails Art. and the snail yeah. poop changes color. Oh, really? What? what? You don't what? do that here? No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't well, know that. On. Was that a German school thing? Dang. 
Maybe. You can change Tricky's color in Star Fox's Fenner <laughs> just by what you feed him too. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so there was supposed to be a lot of that, and so I can see how that <laughs> comes across. <laughs> So oh, man. I know Brian. Oh, I, look, you, I grew up in a boring town. Okay. There's also so you have to use Snail dragon. Exciting. You have to use dragon poop in okay. in a little dragon's cafe. You collect it from its bed. I like <laughs> how you're telling me this now. I just need to tell oh, you. Oh, I know what you're interested in. Oh, by the in. way, poop, the poop <laughs> poop jokes. Um, so yeah, I asked Watson about this. It's like, why do you get it from his bed? <laughs> like he sleeps in his poop. <laughs> Your That's dragon's horrible. Not. So, but then he told me he's like, well, it's a dragon, so it's clean. Like it's fine. This game is weird. <laughs> dragon poop. I don't know if I buy that. This game is it's weird. Magical. You gotta admit that now. What do dragons it is weird. eat? Don't it's dragons fine. eat people? The mom I is like half it. dragon. And yeah, you that have to was. Cook and you change. Some the of the dialogue is really wacky too. It's just like, <laughs> it's a it's a cute game. It's cute. I, but if you if you're into those kinds of games, like I, I recommend you checking it out just because it is really relaxing, just pleasant. Um, so nice. I've so, had fun with happy it. Happy game. I, I'm gonna definitely see it through. My dragon will be big and strong, and we're gonna fly to the top tower of the area. Like there's this. I know there's like a, a very high mountain somewhere that I can get to if we raise a dragon big, big enough, and I want to get there. So I wish you luck. Thanks. <laughs> Good luck, Miranda. Find, find that poop. I believe in you. It's very easy to find. That was the reason it's in the bed. So when I'm done hunting and killing monsters and making them into hats at night, I will go to Little Dragon's Cafe and pretend I'm nice and feed my little dragon friend. But, <laughs> okay. Brian, you have some other games you wanted to talk about. Yes. We also have question block. Okay, if we're running out of time, we can I can kick You have mine. games with killing? Can I yeah. actually also shout out one game that I first had? Huh? Yeah. This is like literally yeah, the quickest thing in the world. Um, another cooking game. It's called Battle Chef Brigade. Oh, it yeah. It came out a while ago, but it got a massive update. So if you oh, guys haven't checked that I out, even right, right, please right. look into it. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I bought it. I played it. It's, new it's, food. It's really cool. New yeah. battles. Yeah. It's really cool. Yep. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Anyway, that's it. No, that's yeah. great. Brian, did you want to talk about Carol Blaster? Uh, I will. I want to talk about Victor Vran okay. really quick because I played that. a bunch of it last night. Uh, Diablo just got announced for Switch, obviously, and we've talked about uh, Nine Parchments on the show before. I'm a big fan of the sort of like top-down action casual RPG. Oh, gauntlet likes. Yeah, gauntlet likes. Um, and I played a bunch of this game last night with my wife, who doesn't really play a lot of video games, but she was super into this one. Um, I don't think the UI is very pretty. I think the graphics are like kind of garish and a little ugly sometimes but uh the game's really fun and I'd it's say you're really selling it <laughs> yeah i know i know but like as, a, as, a, as an action like rpg it's it's yeah it's sort of like castlevania diablo you fight okay. a bunch of like ugly monsters and you kill them and fight hordes and bosses and stuff like that and level up your character get new weapons and stuff um super fun really casual kind of laid back you can play it on hardcore modes if you want but um yeah check this one out i enjoy it a lot and i'm gonna keep playing it is it a two-player call or four-player? Uh, I've only tried two, but I think you can do more than that. Oh, cool. All right. So now is that time for Question Block. Well, we'll we will be taking your questions on IGN.com right now. So if you have any questions, let us know in the chat. And mm -hmm. in the meantime, while we're waiting for those questions, I do have one queued up. This is mostly for me and Miranda. I'm sorry. If you guys have answers, yes. please let us know. <laughs> but Jeff Hawthorne on our Facebook on NBC asked, Pokemon, you want desperately to have a Mega or a Lolan form? Oh, man. <laughs> it's oh, hard, right? No, that's hard. I was just like, yeah, because I knew it was going to be a Pokemon thing. And then the, just like, I I want the all. Is, did they make a donkey with a Hawaiian donkey. shirt? Like no, a that, long neck he's, donkey. He's already, he's already local to that's Alola. Where he's from. But oh. you could get a hometown. Brian. Oh, so he doesn't get. In a How did you not form? know this? Brian doesn't yeah, know anything. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like when, it's like when they call Hawaiian punch just punch in Hawaii. Is that is that what oh, we're going no. with here? Is it really only called punch? No, I made that up. So that donkey doesn't get a Hawaiian shirt because he lives there already. Yeah, he lives there already. He's yeah, already he's a Lolan. So what? It. He'll get a Kanto form. But you get. You guys are. You guys haven't answered it. What's the? What's the? No. So if I were to choose a Pokemon to get Mega form, probably Drifblim because I like Drifloon's line so much. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love favorite. them so much. It's like, does it become a hot like a, a blimp, like a full on blimp? Who, I don't who's, know. Who's the Who's the garbage pile with cigarette butts in them? <gasps> Um, Garbodor. <laughs> yeah, I want a giant one of him. A mega Garbodor. That sounds. Yeah. Disgusting. I knew that was your favorite, by the way. <laughs> He's great. Yep. I feel bad for him. I want to see um, mega evolutions of the evolutions of all of the evolutions. Oh. oh, well, that's like a lot to ask. Yeah, I know. That's so many. But yeah. I would. I totally agree. I want yeah. it. Give it to them. They just. I don't cheating. even understand that. That sounds like a lot to ask. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Evie has multiple. Different I chose one. Evolutions. <laughs> yeah. Evie evolves into Jolteon, Flareon. You know, oh, yeah, you know, on, know you know about the evolutions. Yeah, the of course. Brothers. You played the original Pokemon games. Right? I did. Yeah. yeah, I did. So you at least know Which three. Which is plain dust. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I do. I think this this is adorable. What we have here on the. Yes, if you want to explain uh, this, this is, No, this is Kaiju Pikachu Charizard. So, 
There's a different line of hooded Pikachu with the so it's Pikachu with mega forms of different Pokemon. So it's like them him dressed up as their mega evolutions, but this is just a regular Charizard suit, but for the kaiju line. I don't think that's true. Yeah. I think this is a a it's, killer it's like a, a, a killer Pikachu that has killed a Charizard. Ate out the inside. But has fun. Oh, man. It has fun. It only Pikachu smelled became, on the outside. Pikachu and now became a monster it. hunter. Right. You know? yeah. And made armor out no, of this Charizard. this is dark stuff. I I think there's a reason Pikachu's my favorite. Is <laughs> I, think, I think it's Pikachu trying to sneak into an R-rated movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dragon. Sure. So. Oh, man. <laughs> there's our we have answers. questions in the chat? <laughs> yeah, we do um, have. Oh, yeah, for a Alolan form. Oh, yeah. Um, I want I want an Alolan form Absol. Just because okay. he's so dark and edgy looking, and I want to see him kind of like cutified a little bit, see what happens, because that's what happened to Raichu. That's all we wanted to. Raichu became mm -hmm. soft and cute because he it's ate cute. too many pancakes. So what happens to Absol when it eats too many pancakes? This is canon. I'm not making this up. Really? Yes. Brian, don't encourage her. Why not? This sounds great. <laughs> I want pancakes now. <laughs> all right, what's the next question? All right, the next question is, what is your favorite moment so far? where the uniqueness and versatility of the Switch was incredibly apparent. This is from Drippy of Motorville. Uh, nice call out to Nino Kuni. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so the best moment, you, that's basically like a Karen moment, right? Where, yeah. uh, the, the, I mean, for me, the coolest moments are always on an airplane. Like, you forget to turn on airplane mode, and then you realize that people playing Mario Kart. Yeah. Just, it's just so cool to be playing with people, and you're like, are you You're like <laughs> looking around and there you know you might not have IGN people on the plane otherwise we always team up yeah but, mm -hmm. uh, it's just so cool to see when there when there are other people who want to play a, a multiplayer game you didn't expect it mm -hmm. I uh I was playing through the master trials in breath of the wild mm -hmm. on a red eye flight and uh I I beat them and cheered very loudly and probably woke up a bunch of people <laughs> and this woman came over and tapped me on the shoulder and she was like Hey, and I was like, "Hey, sorry, I was yelling." And she's like, "No, good job. Like, I'm I'm playing Zelda too." Oh, <laughs> like, that's so cute. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> <It's great. laughs> she was watching you. Yeah. I always love seeing people play Switch on the plane because I get really nosy and try to like see what they're playing. Yeah. And I've never talked to dating anyone. game. Oh. <laughs> I've yeah. never talked to anyone playing a Switch like in public before. I'm too shy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a good icebreaker. But Just walk up I like, hey. I do really like the functionality of being able to take the Switch with me places, mm -hmm. with the dock. Like I took the Switch with me when I went to Florida and it was no big deal putting everything I needed into mm -hmm. my suitcase because everything is so light. Oh, and speaking of putting things into my suitcase, my Switch dock um, actually made the TSA search through my carry-on bag. Oh, Why weird. The dock? Well, I just forgot to put it in my um, regular suitcase and I just oh, had it. Why are you bringing in a dock? Because I, I was going to a, a friend's place oh, okay. where there were like 20 people yep. and I wanted yeah. to play like no, Mario Kart sense. and Overcooked mm -hmm. and stuff. So I, I brought thought a dock. You, I thought you were docking in your hotel room. No. <laughs> no. I'm, I would this do that. For, for multiplayer <laughs> <Why not>? purposes. <laughs> so the TSA stopped it? Yeah. Did they know what it was? Or did no. You have to explain they it? asked if I had a, an, any iPads or batteries oh. and I was hmm. like, no, like they, I have all of my stuff. They do here. make you take out the switch. Like yeah. I used to be able I to have it in my bag. Out. Now they say like, oh, this is too big. You got to take. Oh, it. Really? I've gotten away with I it. I send it. Yeah, me too. Back. This past week, I, I was going to get away with it. Maybe right. you look harmless, and I don't. So I have an accent that many villains share in movies. And you bring all that snail poop with you. That's everywhere. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think uh, <laughs> for me was when I got to show my parents that like how cool games were again. Oh, like when yeah. my dad still plays like shooters and stuff, but my mom is like really big into racing games and she likes Mario a lot. So like mm -hmm. last Christmas we were all together, or I guess it was Thanksgiving, and we had gotten my dad a Switch for his birthday back that past summer, and we got Mario and I was playing Mario and they're like, oh, I want to see that. And my mom's like, well, I want to play that, but I don't want to share with your dad. <laughs> and so then we got her one for Christmas. <laughs> That's awesome. And so, yeah, it's really just been cool. kind of neat to see like how it is, how easy it is to share games with, with people that don't normally play games. That, the split off the Joy-Cons and play <laughs> co-op with somebody or yeah. multiplayer with somebody thing is like, it's, it's really visionary. Like the fact that mm -hmm. it actually just really works. I mean, one of you gets the weird Joy-Con with the yeah. stick in the middle, but it's okay. I yeah. feel like it's just like, oh man, Nintendo did it again, where you can just take their games and show them to people who don't really care about yep. them as much, and suddenly be very invested. Totally true. Yeah, yep. it's so. so cool. So, Ill Girl Jill, this is the last question asked. Uh, we have a lot of crossover into Super Smash Bros. like Rathlos, Bomberman, etc., and Starlink with Fox. What small crossover would you want to see in game coming out this year? Oh, that's a good man. question. Uh, I want a rideable. Uh, that donkey from Pokemon <laughs> in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm a big fan <laughs> of his work now, and I think he needs to be in more games. <laughs> Mudbrain okay. every game. I, 
I, I mean, I, I would love for Mario Party just to open up a little bit more. I, f I feel like we've seen so many games, and like, while the mini games are, are fun, I feel like the world could expand. Whether that means bringing in external characters from, from somebody else, uh, I mean, I would just love to see the Nintendo Party concept come back. You know? mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like, get me Zelda and Metroid uh, and you know, Samus and everybody in there. Yeah, Link shows up in Mario Kart and stuff now. That's right. So yeah. all There's that off. crossover. But Mario Party, Expanded. I feel like, could yeah. could get some new life by letting you actually play challenges that are set in different worlds yep. and mm -hmm. you know, not just frying cubes. And <laughs> and beef. That's a great challenge, by the way. It is. Really fun. So that is about all the time we have left. And I... Oh. No? No, it is. Okay. <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah. On top, we are out of time. <laughs> oh, I wish we could keep talking, yeah. but you can always catch us on live on MVC and IGN.com at 3 p.m. Pacific time every Thursday and 24 hours later on YouTube and all of your favorite podcasting services. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I wish I could talk about Monster Hunter for about three more hours. She will. But I can't. <laughs> so we have to go. Have a great day. Bye. Thank Get you the guys. thing. Bye.